Coming to you from the forbidden forest under a blood moon. It's the little podcast of horrors with James, Christina, and Chris. Welcome to a little podcast of horrors. I'm your host, Christina. And I'm these... Chris. I'm James. <laughs> and this is episode six of our fun little podcast. Um, And don't ask me the date with which this will be coming out, because I don't know. But (laughs) episode six, nonetheless. All right. So my story. So so what are we we drinking today? Oh, yeah. Okay. If it helps Uh, you, Christina. uh, What's fun is, if I'm correct, and I'll look right now, uh, episode six is on November the 6th. Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) Oh, damn it. No, I was wrong. Dang it. You hurt my feelings. It's November the 8th. (laughs) Wait, no? Yeah, it's November the 8th. Oh, that's fine. Remember, remember, the 8th of November. Nothing really happened. (laughs) So I'm drinking. (laughs) If you can't tell, uh, I'm drinking too. From from (laughs) Martin House Brewery in Fort Worth. A, uh, it's called Supermarket Softies. It's a sugar cookie ale with frosting, sprinkles, lactose, and vanilla. Oh, are they it's, our new sponsors? It, if only. <laughs> I, I would take them in a heartbeat, but it's, okay. it's delicious. If you're listening. <laughs> I just really like Barton House. That's, that's solid. Uh, I'm still drinking Bullet Rye. Uh, I'm drinking Bullet 95 Rye. Frontier whiskey, straight American rye whiskey. This has such a good finish, a good taste. And if Bullet ever wants me to sponsor them by sending me <laughs> cases and cases of their Bullet rye, I will not say no. <laughs> You're like, literally say anything. <laughs> you are live, girl. <laughs> You're live. Not like I can't cut it out easily and make it look like you never said it at all. <laughs> No, let me have the fear. It keeps me going. Um, I'm drinking Bodobox Cabernet Sauvignon out of my I Heart Mom cup that my son made me <laughs> because I'm classy. <laughs> I love it. And if you'll, if you can see in the camera, it has no handle anymore because I accidentally broke it. That's. I'm dealing with that same thing. Like several of my <laughs> mugs have no handles because they just break off. I know. It's my, and, and see, it's got his little handprint on it. It's it like my sad. favorite mug makes me for sad. wine. So child handprints are usually creepy. <laughs> in this I mean, case, no. it's endearing. Only if okay. like they're on the wall <laughs> and it says die next to it. Yeah, only if it's <laughs> in blood on the wall. <laughs> well, if it's some blood on your mug. Is well, it just creepy? Is it, is it just kind of riding the border of creepy and enduring? I mean, if it's my son that did that, then I'd be like classic Elliot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Elliot. <laughs> what a rascal. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Christina, it says die. <laughs> Maybe it's not finished. Maybe it says die yet, which is harsh. I know, but. He's health conscious. Okay. Calm down. <laughs> Okay, I do have a story today. Um, so weave your tail. <laughs> weave my tail. All In right. Ties us with darkness. This is the story of Peter Stump. Two peas. <laughs> um, oh, so- this guy needs a theme song. <laughs> oh my god! I knew James immediately is going to jump on this. This guy needs. This episode needs a theme song. First off, it was eight off Stump, and now it's Stump. It and it is another one that's based in Germany. I I'm I'm not picking on Germany. It's just happened to be <laughs> this. A bunch of psychos. <laughs> like we don't have enough stories that are. Horrible. Stop giving. <laughs> people one syllable names and this will all be over (laughs) all right well we'll get to his name later because we're not even sure if that's his real name oh (laughs) all right so pete okay peter stump so is he serial killer victim or a werewolf 
Bum, bum, bum. I don't know. So far, I'm stumped. I I feel like you guys are getting really excited about this one. Here comes <laughs> the laundry list of puns. <laughs> All right. Sprinkle them throughout the episode, James. <laughs> yeah. Give us breathers. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if there are that many stump related puns offhand. Okay, so this is obviously a werewolf story because I ended it with werewolves, right? Okay, so this is actually the story of Peter Stump, the werewolf of Bedburg. Okay, so first I'm going to kind of go into a little history of werewolves. I love that she's like, this is obviously a werewolf story. (laughs) The last (laughs) name Stump. Who else chooses the name Stump? No, not because of the last name, but because I said serial killer victim or werewolf. So like obviously werewolves. (laughs) Um, All right. So here's a little history of werewolves in case you did not know. So the legend of the werewolf, they're really, we're not totally sure exactly when or where the legend came from, but werewolves are found throughout the world. All right. And the earliest known, re- re- le- le- see, Chris, I can't speak either. The earliest known source was the Epic of Gilgamesh. So for those that don't know, that's an ancient uh, Mesopotamian epic poem written between 2100 and 1200 BC. What's sad um, is I know that because I'm married to an English teacher. You're also a historian. So that is sad. <laughs> Not that good of an of a history major. Like I know Gilgamesh because my wife. That's okay, why well, I know Gilgamesh. If I get any of this history wrong, Chris, I'm relying on you to fact check me live. Okay. <laughs> I'll go get her. I'll be like, Katie, is Chris right about this? <laughs> No, there's only one part about the Epic of Gilgamesh. So what happens basically where the werewolf comes in is uh, Gilgamesh basically rejects this chick because she turned her former lover into a wolf. So that's like the earliest mentioned werewolf scenario. And it's this lady that turned her former lover into a wolf. So, you know, major red flag vibes. So he was like, nah, peace out. All right, so the werewolf also appears in Greek mythology with the story of Lycaon. Um, So to refresh anyone's memories, you want to do it, Chris? I say Lycaon, as in lichen. Mm -hmm. That's just what it made me think of, lycanthropy. The belief that people turn into witches and werewolves. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Because you look like in the werewolf. (laughs) Chris's face. I feel like at some point the story of me is going to come out in this episode. I of the certainly night, hope not. <laughs> of the night that I I had I had a little too much wine. I have a feeling the story about me that I'm about to tell is gonna come out <laughs> yeah. from my mouth. Yeah, because my story does not relate to you or it better not, or we'll be really scared. <laughs> but why don't you tell your story? You mentioned it. If I do, I'm gonna put it. And uh, <laughs> it's a story that's circulated amongst our group for a long time. Because, By you. Because <laughs> one night I drank way too much wine and I told everybody I was a werewolf. And I started trying to take off my clothes because I was transforming. And Katie had to stop me. And yeah. And ever since then, my brother-in-law loves to refer to me as Wolfman. The end. <laughs> and he continues to tell everyone about the story to this day. It's a really good story. Don't I'm glad like he does. Love it. <laughs> it likens him to a werewolf. Whoa. I am delighted every time I hear that story. So I wasn't just a werewolf, I was a time traveling werewolf. Oh, see? He's because I told everybody that I've also been there. I actually went back in time and watched them all be born, my siblings in law. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> You're so intense. <laughs> so you're like Dr. Werewolf? <laughs> Dr. Who? <laughs> yes. Oh boy. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that tale, Chris. Um, because I know everybody would have been like, what the hell was the story that he's talking about? <laughs> 
All right. I love that story. Okay. So back to history of the werewolf situation here. So Greek mythology, Lycaon was king of Arcadia and wanted to test, aka fuck with Zeus, um, and test out his omniscient abilities. So Lycaon served his own son to Zeus at dinner. Uh, dead of the year. Uh, Zeus was like WTF and turned Lycaon into a wolf and killed all his other kids. <laughs> And I did look it up and he had supposedly 50 sons. So we killed him. Zeus was like, I'm on a rampage. Wow. Everyone's that's really, really big. Had 50 <laughs> sons. Yeah. I don't know. I have three and I'm all like, I need, I need a nap, please. Well, you know, like Hayan was not taking care of any of those kids. <laughs> Um, the good news about that story is that Zeus did bring the kid that Lycan fed him. He actually, Zeus did bring him back to life. So he had mercy on that poor victim of a son. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Um, there are a couple alternate versions of this story. One of them, um, Lycan's sons feed Zeus a human child. Um, and then in another one, Lycaon sacrifices a child at an altar for Zeus and That's Zeus nice. did not like that shit. So he was like, you're a wolf. Um, so the werewolf legend eventually evolved over time and around the middle ages. That's where we kind of get that hybrid shapeshifter like view of werewolves that we have today. All right. So we get a really badass story because Zeus is bad at punishment. Like if he had just <laughs> if he had done his top. job right and like made him an anteater, <laughs> then we'd have were anteaters, and yeah. that would be much less cool. And it's much, well, much, much a fucking a lot cool. less smarter. <laughs> he just made like Hayan like superpowers, or like a were sloth. Kill people now. A were sloth that there just like, hangs on trees and That'd smiles a lot. See that when you everybody. said that, that just made me think of a ghost. Uh, um, space ghost episode where he kills an ant because an ant bites him and then he kills oh yes try the biting me ants. now ant from the afterlife <laughs> yes like why don't you do that yeah that'd probably be a lot less like a lot fewer casualties since werewolves are like super powered and notoriously bloodthirsty um, all right, so let's move into a little bit about werewolf trials. So I actually didn't even realize there were werewolf trials. Um, I was vaguely aware of that, not to any specific detail, but mm -hmm. the minute you said werewolf trials, I feel like, yeah, I've read about some of those. I want to see how you do that. Like, how do you prove someone's a werewolf? Do you just kind of shake a kibbles and bits bowl in front of them? They actually, or you, or you do it. go, it's a good boy. <laughs> Who's a good boy and see who in the crowd who gets excited? That is so wrong on so many levels. But so historically oh, accurate, James, you actually nailed it. So yes. they pulled out the Pur Purina chow, dog chow. No. <laughs> Asked in 1647 <laughs> because they had the arena all the way back then. If you bought stock they in had Purina, the boy, are you then. rich now? The goodest of boys. <laughs> okay. Anyway, back to business. We will now commit scratchy behind the ear. <laughs> Who thumps their leg? That's the werewolf. <laughs> okay. Uh, so his story, his story, hysteria around werewolfery. Uh, my new favorite word, by the way, surfaced about the same time hysteria around witches started to surface in Europe. So in the, like the early 1400s. It wasn't quite as extreme as like the hysteria around witches, but they're, they kind of come to a head at the same time and are kind of hand in hand. Um, but hand so in paw, hand in paw. <laughs> I feel that sounds by precious. That. I already used that one. Too. <laughs> Can't just reuse the same pun alone out of context. No I'm less. limited. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so people were accused of turning into wolves and mutilating cattle. So that's usually like 
you know how witches were kind of blamed if like crops didn't grow or like if oh, babies yeah. died at birth, things like that. Oh yeah. So if there were cattle mutilations or any murders or any other animal deaths, they little go... do they know that was actually aliens. <laughs> yeah. I mean, didn't they know by the crop circles, you know? <laughs> Um, so that's when they were like, it's fucking werewolves. Okay. So lots of people were executed, um, along with <laughs> accused witches. Fucking like werewolves. <laughs> Sons of bitches. So I, I didn't write this down in my notes, but I feel like it's important to know that like at this time in history, um, Europe had a real wolf problem. So fear of wolves was very, was it like, they were a real threat. So, I mean, I feel like it's not a huge jump to make it also supernatural. Like, why not? <laughs> if you're finding all these things mutilated, why not? Society make it always blames the furries. <laughs> Wait, what kind of furries are we talking about here, James? Yeah. The wolf one. <laughs> Elaborate, please. The wolf ones. Do you don't need to draw a diet? The wolf. We're talking about wolves. <laughs> clearly like the, the bunny ones. <laughs> are you an expert on it? <clears throat> furries not any more than I'm an expert on anything else okay <laughs> okay so we have kind of a similar circumstance going on with like the werewolves and the witches so they target people and say those they're werewolves and then they would be tortured into confessing that they were werewolves and like how they became werewolves okay yeah so oh go ahead oh no i, I was just gonna say that seemed to be the standard practice like yeah anytime you were accused of anything it was we're gonna torture you mm -hmm. until you admit it's true like yeah you could accuse somebody of being a pterodactyl and you torture them enough, they're going to say, I'm a pterodactyl just to make yeah. the pain stop. I'm going to be like, like, I'm a fucking pterodactyl, dude. Like, <laughs> I've got pterodactyl babies. Like, <laughs> this is like, yeah, because that's that's going to work. It's like, th this is concrete methods to get to the truth. No, um, you'll get anybody to admit to anything if you just stop torturing them. Mm -hmm. They'll say anything you want. Yeah. So... There were some similar similar elements to the confessions, kind of like the witch trials. Like they they always had something kind of a similar vein. So here are some of the common elements were being approached by a man in black, uh, given a so again they're mistaking it for aliens. <laughs> I knew you were going to bring up aliens. <laughs> Uh, being given a potion or a magical item that's like it, the item would be like enchanted it's usually a belt and it gives them their powers um, and then participating in uh, like midnight forest witch rituals so again they're hand in hand here or hand in paw oh. <laughs> well that kind of goes into the like I said the mm -hmm. de definition of lycanthropy because mm -hmm. I remember when I was a kid and I heard the definition, which was the belief that you can turn somebody into witches and werewolves. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, yeah, that's an interesting combination there, witches and werewolves. Yeah. Well, in the Middle Ages, they were both like selling their souls to Satan to get powers of some sort. Yeah. Um, and then the last furry one, powers. Yeah. Furry powers. <laughs> their secret parties in the woods <laughs> and then you know after receiving being approached by the the man in black getting their magical item partying in the woods with the witches then it's followed by a bloodthirsty rampage so these are really common That's how most wild elements. parties end mm -hmm. what uh, parties have you been going to I, he didn't want to answer that <laughs> uh, same. <laughs> um okay so we have some ulterior motives for witch trials, werewolf trials, things of that nature, right? So one of those was um, this piece of information was specific to, I think, Switzerland. So I don't know if it's the same across Europe, but in Switzerland, they were 
guilty of acu- executing people for well, well, wolfery to get their property. So once people were executed, their property was handed directly to like the vassal of the king. So it was like a nice little land grab there. So it's like the wolf of Wall Street, except the wolf gets killed in the end. Yep, exactly. <laughs> After snipping the cocaine off of her butt. <laughs> That movie was really upsetting. (laughs) Yeah, I knew that in the first five minutes of that film, I'm like, I'm going to hate everybody in this movie. And sure enough, I did. Every one of them. I've watched that movie once, and once Mm -hmm. was more than enough. Yeah, that was enough. Yeah, I mean, when you have furries working in Wall Street, just things get a little weird. (laughs) Get a little out of control. (laughs) Having bloodthirsty orgies and in the woods and such. No, nah, it's just regular Wall Street. So regular orgies in offices. Is Pretty that much. what we mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. Just watching The Wolf of Wall Street, I kept thinking like, how do these people have this much libido? Most of these people are in their 40s or 50s. I'm 43. And at this point, I just want to go to bed most of the time. Like... It's the it furry insane. suits. They they kind of give your persona a, a, a boosted sense of confidence. Also the cocaine. Want, there's a part of it almost <laughs> wants James to watch this film so he can just be like, why? It's just watching that film, and we're going off on a tangent now, and I'm sorry, Christine, I apologize. <laughs> oh, good. It, it was like, I was watching this, I'm like, this entire thing is just exhausting. Like, it no is. thank you. He's married to Margot Robbie in this film. That would be more than enough for me. But he's banging hookers. There's orgies going on in the office. And I'm just sitting there like, this just looks tiring to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I just want to go to work. I would just want to go to work and go home. Like, I'd be like, in the background be like, oh, great. Everybody's Norton Coke and banging the lady again. I just want to finish my you would never make it in wall street i wouldn't chris <laughs> i would be so hey chris you want to join oh thank you i just want to go home yeah it's upsetting i would never want to leave margot robbie alone at home when i could be there hanging out with her <laughs> i know right not, not, you know and i've actually i've watched uh several interviews with her like not only is she beautiful she's somebody i would just genuinely love to just hang out with like talk to go on walks with i know maybe that sounds sounds boring but once again like she just seems like a genuinely decent lovely person like she's Mm. yeah she's freaking gorgeous but she's funny and she's got a good sense of humor to her and she's talented and like i watched this interview of her and she was just sitting on like her back porch and i remember thinking like i would just love sitting on that back porch just having coffee talking about Lovely. her day did you see pictures of the real wife of that guy i did she yeah. was gorgeous too yeah it was well cast and now she's like a psychotherapist or psychiatrist or something like that like she really she's a she's a gem <laughs> for sure good for her good for her Okay, back to werewolves. We have branched far off the (laughs) stuff. Yeah. Let me do one of my very natural segues back into our topic. Okay, so. Margot Robbie, if you're just by some (laughs) weird, bizarre coincidence listening to this podcast, which is like against all odds. I'm actually happily married, but I would love to be your friend. I would love to just be buddies with you. And my wife would love to be buddies with you. Just throwing that out there. Okay. Now that we've tried to make a friendship happen. Back to also, werewolves. Also, Miss Robbie, if you're listening <laughs> and, and need new script ideas, I, I charge a <laughs> humble consulting. No. <laughs> no. No. How about no, James? Let Christina tell her werewolf tale. Y'all are gonna have me drink all my wine before I'm done. Let's let's <laughs> yeah, let's let's liken this back to the werewolves. 
<clears throat> okay, smooth tra- transition. So we were talking about ulterior motives. So one other one. Uh, at this time, the Catholic Church was working super hard to stamp out residual like pagan traditions. And they were also clashing with Protestants. So remember that. It's what to say. (laughs) It will become important later. Um, So anyway, uh, it's uh, it's claimed that roughly 30,000 people were executed for werewolfery between 1520 and 1630. That's not a word. This werewolfery is a word. Thank you. (laughs) Just ask your local lycanthropist. (laughs) And it's my favorite new word, so don't even try to burst my bubble. I'm going to call her right now. (laughs) Margot Robbie? (laughs) I would if I could. Well, anyway... I don't care if it's a word or not. I'm going to keep saying it. So, (laughs) all right. So supposedly 30,000 people were executed for werewolfery. Um, However, there is a Dutch historian who's like, no, that's bullshit. Um, Willem de Blecourt. I'm sorry, Willem, if I've mispronounced your name. Um, So trace that source of information to like this notorious werewolf prosecutor back in the day who wrote an outrageous manuscript oh man Um, i totally watched a werewolf law show (laughs) that would be good shit (laughs) sign me up trademark (laughs) copyright whatever i will (laughs) uh, miss robbie i will gladly come up with the scripts for you (laughs) for a modest consulting fee she could be the werewolf prosecutor yes Okay, well, Blake Horror says, like, that's all bullshit. Really, there were probably only, like, a couple hundred people who were executed for werewolfery. But, um, you know, we like to exaggerate things, so why not 30,000? All right, so now we get to our setting, Bedburg, Germany, like, documented as a town as far back as 893 AD. So it's, it's old, but could be older than that. They're not really sure. Um, it's not a huge city. Like currently the population is 25,000 people. And I did look at Wikipedia. So (laughs) Wikipedia, uh, you know how they have like notable people for an area. So for Bedburg, they only have four notable people associated with the town. Uh, one, one of which is our main, our main character, Peter Stump. So, uh, And then again, I just made another note about it, about the 1500s, Catholics and Protestants were fighting it out. And apparently there was like a a lot of clashing going on in Bedburg itself. So that was kind of like a a major element, a major vibe. I don't know what the word is at the time. Do what? Factor. Sure. Yes. (laughs) Context. Yes. Thank you. So also just like any other (laughs) town during this period of time, the black plague was also occurring. So we got a lot of fear, a lot of panic, people freaking out. Um, All right. So Peter Stump here, I wrote a disclaimer right off the top (laughs) because we don't actually know that much about him. (laughs) Uh, He was named the werewolf of Bedburg. uh, So what we have on Stump comes up a little short. (laughs) Shut the fuck up. Yes. <laughs> Shut your stumpy mouth. <laughs> that one really got me. I like that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. So material, like the information we have about him was written like after the trials and we're like clearly biased and possibly even completely fabricated. So we don't really know, know that much about him. So we know so little, we aren't even sure what his real name is. So we call him Peter Stump, but he's also been referred to as Peter Stuba and Abel Griswold. Nah, so, it's Stump. <laughs> totally different name. He uh, has stumped historians for <laughs> centuries. Okay, so here's where Stump probably comes in, though. His left hand was cut off during like a farming accident. 
Wow. Not sure what kind of farming accident, but he definitely was missing a left hand. So we're literally going, we're going literal with this. He was yeah. Like, we call him Peter Stump because basically he's Stump. We called him Stumpy in the old days. You know, <laughs> yes. he had no limbs. Yeah, one of the names they were. Yeah, it's a lot shorter to... than calling the Peter. Doesn't have a hand. Yeah, a lot shorter. One of the names was like Peter Stump, which literally means like a stump, and they think it was actually referring to his missing hand. So super rude. <laughs> but I'm going to keep calling him Peter Stump. As um, you should. Damn werewolves. <laughs> so here's stuff that we think we might know about him. Uh, that he, we think he was born in the mid-1500s in the town of Ippat, which is close to Bedburg in Köln, Germany. Uh, they believe he was actually like a wealthy farmer um that he was a widower but i couldn't really find any information about his wife or what happened to her uh but he had two children a boy and a girl and supposedly he was pretty well liked friendly and successful but i mean if people are accusing you of werewolfery then there's a downfall somewhere Somewhere. It's not Somewhere. the fact that you turn into a raging, <laughs> hairy monster that murders people. Or maybe that it is. I don't know. Well, let's review the facts, okay? Let's see if he's a really a werewolf. <laughs> let's review the facts about this <laughs> werewolf case. We don't even know anything about the dude, really, for sure. So <laughs> there are no facts. <laughs> okay, so the crimes. So, like, why did they think there was a werewolf in the first place? So um, mutilated farm animals started popping up all over the place in their area. Um, And then women and children started disappearing. Some were found later mutilated grotesquely and others were never seen again. So these like disturbing events had everyone on high alert and they like even armed themselves because eventually like at first they thought it was just wolves um because like i said it was wolves were a real threat at that point right but so they armed themselves but it quickly like spiraled downhill and they were like these mutilations are so bad it's a werewolf we got a werewolf in our town all right so now why stump like why do we pick this guy that's like missing a hand because the werewolf (laughs) only had one (laughs) you are so fucking right (laughs) oh my god is he that's amazing. Oh my God, James. Let's just say, uh, James is the master. That's <laughs> what I would detective. go on. <laughs> okay, so that is one of them. So witnesses claimed the werewolf was missing a paw, um, a left paw, and he was missing a left hand. So, and who do we know <laughs> that's missing a hand? Exactly. Oh, son of a bitch. It's a pizza stump. Yep. Okay, so they the villagers like there were some villagers that had claimed that they had trapped the werewolf okay and it chewed its own paw off to escape and so that's why they were like oh stump doesn't have his left hand so he must have chewed it off when we caught him as a werewolf but stump lost his hand like years before any of this <laughs> but they were like fake news don't care about that you don't think you're missing traveling <laughs> werewolf that's how he did it yep don't that you know that werewolves out. have regenerative capabilities? So, not in Bedburg, Germany. Hashtag not all werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so some other factors that might have led people to want to target him. Uh, we previously mentioned the clash between Catholic- Catholics and Protestants in the area at the time. He was a Protestant convert. So he was a Protestant werewolf. Yes. <laughs> so really the werewolf part wasn't even the issue. It was just he was a dirty Protestant. He's a dirty ass Protestant. Yes. Damn, <laughs> both of you. I'm a Catholic here. <laughs> and a were Catholic, apparently. <laughs> Good Lord. I'm sorry, everybody that's listening. I didn't know it was gonna go to this level. Well, stop inquisitioning. <laughs> Anyway, that was possibly a factor at the time. 
Second factor, just like my first story I did, guys, rumors of incest. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. So he had this mistress, and people said that he was distantly related to her, but it was also said that she was possibly married herself. So it could have been that her husband was the one who initially threw out Peter Stump's name, you know, because he was screwing his woman. Incest to us, it's a way of life. I've got a cute sister. She's only 13. And tomorrow, I'll make her my wife. You're really upsetting me. I do but apologize. Not as upsetting as what I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a relief. <laughs> so he was also accused of getting his daughter pregnant. And that's how people believe that his son was conceived. Because remember, I said he had a son and a daughter. Um, wow. So his own son was also his grandson. That's yuck. I have no words. <laughs> so these the stump rumors, doesn't oh. have much of a branching tree. <laughs> no, it's, it's staying pretty, pretty close to home. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's sticking to the the stump family is sticking to the base. Oh, there we go. So these were rumors probably destroyed his reputation. So that's all, you know, like that's probably one of the things that they were like, let's pin it on this guy. He's a fucking freak anyway. Um, so why even bother going to work? Like we, we look at like <laughs> literal incest clearly isn't enough. We need this guy to mm -hmm. turn into a, a wolf hybrid. Then, then we got something. Well, I'm sure they, because of the panic, they wanted somebody to blame for it. So why not this person? Because I don't think they were going to throw anybody in jail at that time for incest. So why not pin it on this weirdo we that cannot, we don't like? We can't get him for banging his daughter. But son of a bitch turns into a werewolf. <laughs> Hear him. <laughs> All right. Uh, so in eight, uh, 1589, um, a group of men accompanied by their loyal hounds supposedly tracked down the werewolf and managed to trap it. Mysteriously, the captured werewolf disappeared and they found Peter Stump in his place. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Holding for commentary. And they were like, we're good. <laughs> what are the chances of running into this guy at his house that we're suddenly at? I know. That's exactly what I was thinking. He was like walking around his property. And they were like, we trapped a werewolf. What? It's Peter Stump? He's like, man, this is a really lovely night. <laughs> well, the werewolf was gone, but suddenly here is Peter Stump. Coincidence, I think not. <laughs> All right. So... They obviously take Peter to jail or whatever they had back then. And to no one's surprise, torture had back then. I mean, do you call the <laughs> no. cop do you call the cops or animal control? <laughs> this is 1500s Germany. They don't have animal control. <laughs> but I just want to go back to like Christina, they're throwing in jail. Whatever the fuck they have. Like if I <laughs> see I a werewolf, they just put them in a room know. and be like, you're in jail. I if I see a werewolf you know. today, what? if I see a werewolf today, is you that see a, a werewolf call to today? Me? You're gonna run your ass. The but afterward, direction, is I it hope. a call to the police or animal control? Honestly, James, if you see a, a werewolf today, you're gonna be calling to God uh, to deliver you from evil because you're most likely a dead man, and then I'm gonna mourn you. You can't, yeah, you can't call anyone because you'll be thrown in the loony bin. Yeah, you, you can't call anybody because either side, if you say, there's a werewolf after me, they were like, okay, crazy. No, just, you know, there's <laughs> there's a bizarrely large wolf pestering me. Are you going to say, but when you call animal control or police, whoever, are you going to say werewolf? Or are you going to say I'm being attacked by a wolf? I'm not an idiot. I'll just say... And, and a a questionably large. Then you're going to call animal control, because the police are going to go. Glad to have solved this. You need to call. So animal control. if you have a werewolf sign, you call animal control. Good. 
I'm glad you have settled that. Okay. Well, I'm glad Hope we you're ready, that. Animal Control. <laughs> to get all the werewolf calls. <laughs> to flood the lines. Okay, so they take him to jail or whatever, Chris, and <laughs> torture the shit out of him. The kennel. The kennel, sure. So can you guess what happens next? He doesn't turn into a werewolf. <laughs> that is true. He does not. Uh, but he makes a shocking confession that no one saw coming. And here are the things he confessed to. Practicing black magic since the age of 12, naturally. Uh, making a pact with the devil, as you do. Receiving a belt from the devil that gives him the ability to transform into a wolf. Uh, once he takes it off, he goes back to being a human. Uh, I have a little side note about this. They never found a belt that apparently matches description. I don't know what the actual description was, but I just imagine them trying on all his belts, trying to see which one would turn them into a werewolf and not finding. Hey, them. are you a wolf yet, Bob? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay. He also confessed to killing 14 children and two pregnant women. So this is a gross detail, but since it's probably complete fiction, I feel okay talking about it. So for the two pregnant women, he claimed he ripped out the babies from their wombs and ate their hearts. So just like really leaning into the whole, like, I made a deal with the devil and now I eat babies. Now this is just getting grim dark. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he said that one of the children that he killed was his own son. So... And he likes pushing grandmas in the traffic yeah. and kicking puppies. Yeah. Wears pantograms on all his shirts and black lipstick. So just like straight into the stereotype there. All right. Uh, so at his trial, of course, they brought the forced confession as evidence. And then a couple other claims were thrown at him. So he was accused of being an insatiable bloodsucker who killed livestock men women and children for 25 years in an attempt to sate his appetite wouldn't they notice that many people you would think butchered yeah you would think <laughs> he was also accused of donning like a wolf pelt uh while he hunted for his victims which wait so that isn't that seems yep. counterintuitive. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was like, so he's like just this killer. <laughs> he's a serial killer that wears wolf skin. Okay. Why don't we see any other werewolves? Because he killed them all. <laughs> Only logical answer. Okay, yeah, I'm with it. Uh, he was also accused of sexually assaulting his victims before killing them. So they just like added in that spicy depraved note uh as a further screw you so after all that they said yeah deaf guilty and order his ordered his execution so guess when he was executed halloween on a full it moon <laughs> he was executed on october 31st whoa 1589. I don't know if it was a full moon. You need to look at a chart for that. <laughs> totally called it. It was killed on Halloween. And it was considered the most brutal execution in German history. Um, and it was truly over, top, over the top. So, you know, they tortured him to get that confession out of him. Yeah. Uh, before they executed him, they went ahead and tortured him some more. So... <laughs> We're going to execute you, but we're going to torture you before we execute you, because fuck you. Yeah, pretty much. So they put him on a wheel. They broke all his limbs and then flayed him. Oh, my God. So it sounds like the accusations are just all projection. Yes. <laughs> I believe you are right. <laughs> That's, oh, even my worst enemy, I would not do that to. Mm -hmm. Like, the idea of just putting him on a wheel and breaking all his limbs. Mm -hmm. And then 
removing his flesh like they filleted him yeah like was that necessary that's not that's not even remotely oh Mm. my god so then that's the torture part the execution they beheaded him and then burned his body to top it off they also executed stump's mistress and daughter they were also yeah what yeah and I didn't find much detail on like why we don't put up with the murder of women and children in this town. Yeah. Let's so... execute these bitches. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to fornicate or be born from werewolf, you die. Because we have decency. Mercy. Um, so they were also flayed, apparently, strangled, and then burned with him. Oh, okay. Strangled? Mm-hmm. Not hung, strangled. No, it's. Are you strangled. telling me that they actually like? I'm sure they didn't do it with their hands. I don't know, but they I were mean, strangled. That's what I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm sure they did it in some scary German way. That some is like, so. What are those things called? Like when you have the rope and you're like tr- using something to like <laughs> help you twist it. Oh. And then the. And then the executioner <laughs> was. Know. You know, the executioner was all unnaturally hairy. They had like really long fingernails. <gasps> they kept the howling. That bug. <laughs> the curse continues. <laughs> no, that is just, you know, I get it in the sense of the time, but like, that's a woman that was and a child. Like, how old what, did it say how old the child was? No, it didn't say how old she that's was. That's just, come on. Like, how do you. Come on. How do you medieval Germany? (laughs) Come on. Look. Every (laughs) every country back then, I get it, was primitive in many different ways, but even to that point. You primitive Germans. To strangle a child because you think it was bore from a werewolf. I just I don't know. That disgusts me on so many levels. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't do more of the detailed stuff that I kept finding about their torture and executions. <laughs> I Thank just, you. Like that, glossed over it. That I mean, like I know we laugh and we joke, but when it comes to kids, I don't like. I never like the idea of any child suffering. Sure, I uh, I think we would all agree with you. Oh, I know you would. I'm not except I'm not for the child killers out there. Yeah, except for them. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's get into our theories. Of course, the first one was uh, Stump was actually a freaking werewolf. Okay. I'm pretty sure <laughs> the accusers were the werewolves. <laughs> this, this stinks of projection all the way through. This is like that game ultimate. What is that? Ultimate night of werewolf. werewolf? I don't even remember what the, it's called. The Catholic werewolves. <laughs> I, I, I agree with James. This this screams As a Catholic projection. werewolf himself, Chris agrees with me. Wow, way to <laughs> out me on that. When I have a, ang- a mob of angry villagers with their pitchforks outside my door, I'm going to call you before they. No, no, no. That's my whole point. You are the mob of angry pitchforks. Because projection. Well, you know what? What's Here's the best confession. way? What's the best way to hide your own werewolfism? Or, or will wolf for tree. So, Chris, uh, if werewolves are real, what do you think? What version of them do you think they'd be? Like where they actually turn into wolves or where they're like the hybrid? Define hybrid. No, like where they're like bipedal still and like, but they look kind of look like you mean wolf like wolf monsters. Man? Yeah. Are we talking like Twilight werewolves uh, versus like. Lawn Cheney werewolf? We're not talking about Twilight anything. I don't know. Did you say Lawn Cheney? I don't know what that is. Like chained up in the lawn like a regular dog? Did you both be, just... That would be a really good, you know, anti-burglary deterrent. Did just a werewolf two of my in the front yard. Oldest friends not understand <laughs> when I said Lawn Cheney. Lawn Chain. Cheney. Lawn he Cheney. Was an actor. In the 19... 19- oh, my God. 
don't it's know. okay. It's okay. I love both of you unconditionally. And I, that's so Lon Chaney was an actor who played multiple monster roles. And one of those was the wolf man in mm. I want to say Wolfman. early forties. Okay. So he's like the classic movie werewolf. I think well, I'm science... of this person. I don't, I'm not talking about science. <laughs> when were we ever talking about science i am very open to the idea that yes it is possible that somebody could metamorphose into something else science has even shown that we that certain species can to a degree metamorphous so i'm open i guess i could say i, I guess so I if caterpillars say, can become butterflies yeah people can become werewolves it's science case closed or, well we have people who grow unnaturally long hair that is actually a scientific condition now they're not werewolves but they can oh. <laughs> Chris, I didn't ask that question to patronize you. I'm oh, open no, to the possibility as well. Okay, I didn't want you to think I was like attacking you for asking that question. I, I just want to know like what. Yeah, you I mean, think. I mean, as a Catholic, you're already thirty percent more likely to be the werewolf. Christina, as the story has shown. Listen to me. I am always feel safe with you. I always feel safe with your questions. I always feel safe. I, with I your direction. Don't, I don't that ever one, feel safe. James, I don't know. No, <laughs> James, I yeah. always feel safe with both of you. No, it's fine. <sighs> Do I actually I believe that when the moon turns full, does somebody you. turn into a monster? No, I don't. Well, okay. What's that? Sorry, go ahead. Do I think that there might be something out there to a basis of it all? Yeah, it's possible. Do I think that there are people out there that are capable of, to a certain degree, as I said earlier, or I stated earlier, a metamorphosis? Yes. Um, but I, I don't throw that under the category of paranormal or, or anything like that. It's science. It's There is a science. I know. I see you face. Well, I'm saying, <laughs> like, you've seen them, James. It's, you've it's seen science. them with the people who uh, um, unnaturally grow hair on their face. That is a natural occurrence. Now, that's yeah, not. And then they eat people afterwards. I mean, well, they don't. <laughs> I don't know. Let's not put that out there. Uh, but what I was actually thinking from this conversation uh, was the Wendigo. Um, oh, Wendigos are creepy. Yeah. So I kind of feel like they're related, but. And in that case, I guess it's more of like a possession or a I don't know on like a Wendigo soul versus changes. werewolf fight I'm betting on the Wendigo maybe okay I'm gonna have to do more research on Wendigos we should do another an episode Wendigos on yeah. are scary yeah yeah <laughs> kids talking to the background yeah they're not as Henry scary is. as as Catholic werewolves that accuse everybody else of being werewolves yeah no, that's my brother bear is, my burly bear is quite a sweetheart um um i don't know i i if i'm being honest i have no stasis or platform about what i believe in werewolves the the werewolves legend goes back centuries is there a possibility i i believe there's a possibility in all things um vampires werewolves all of it um Somebody told me once that in every legend, there is a drop of fact. What that is in this situation, I don't know. But, Hell yeah, Ashtar. But I, I am open to the idea that a lot of things are possible. Because that makes life interesting. That makes life very fascinating to me. Ghosts, vampires, werewolves, all kinds Galactic of things. That's why we do the show. And perhaps maybe Peter Stuff was a werewolf. Probably not. But who knows? And that's what we're here to do. Is just <laughs> And that concludes the story of Stumpy the werewolf. 
That does not conclude it. <laughs> I, just, I just really wanted to say that. Christina gets to conclude this story. I just really wanted to say something. The I conclude this story, not you. I have the power. <laughs> I just needed to say Stumpy the Werewolf. <laughs> Aww, Should be Stumpy. this episode's title. Stumpy the Werewolf. Yes. Okay. So the other two potential theories other than him being a werewolf. That he was a scapegoat like we kind of talked about earlier. A scapegoat to the Catholic werewolves. Yes, to the ca- Catholic werewolves. One night, ultimate werewolf. That's what the game's called. Um, okay. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm really bad at that game because you can tell when I'm lying. My face turns beet red. So I hate being the werewolf. <laughs> That's why one of the many reasons I love you is because you're a bad liar. <laughs> All right. And then the last theory is that Stump was a serial killer. Um, This one's super popular because, you know, nowadays we're, like, obsessed with serial killers. Which Um, I'd say is probably the most plausible. Second to Catholic werewolves. Being a scapegoat. Yeah, I really don't know because there's not good... There's no evidence. Like, we don't even know the dude's real name. (laughs) So, to me, there's, like, no real evidence that he was actually murdering people because all that's cited are like these con- supposed confessions and accusations from townsfolk. So there's no like actual evidence, but um, there is like this pamphlet. It's like 16 pages long about Stump's life. And I think that's where it comes from because it was written by this dude that, well, you tell me if this sounds unbiased and totally credible. So this is the introduction for that 16 page pamphlet. A true discourse declaring the damnable life and death of one Stulba Peter, a most wicked sorcerer who in the likeness of a wolf committed many murders, continuing this devilish practice 25 years, killing and devouring men, women, and children. Yeah, as far as Tales of Stump goes, I fall (laughs) short. I mean, I'm I'm sold. (laughs) Totally unbiased, objective opinion. <laughs> the damnable life. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like like I said, we don't know that much about him. So I don't see how there could be any really good proof that he was even a serial killer. But there was at least one of the websites that I uh, looked at when I was doing my research was completely convinced that it was a serial killer and was like writing as if it's a known fact that he was a serial killer. But, like, no other information really suggested that they knew either way, like, what was up. All right, so here's the fun bit I'll leave you off on. So so now you're a werewolf. <laughs> so now you're a werewolf. So now you're a werewolf. You might what be do asking. you do next? <laughs> uh, yes. So have you found yourself Satan's wolf-shaped puppet? Fear not. <laughs> I have some tips for unwerewolfing yourself. Thank oh, God. oh, good. <laughs> okay, so there. The first couple I'm going to do, um, you know, you could probably safely do. The last half of it are deadly, so I do not suggest doing them. Okay. So the first one would be no exo- werewolves were harmed in the making of this podcast. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't worry. There were no full moons. <laughs> okay, so the first one to unwerewolf yourself or de-werewolf, whatever. Exhaustion. So, I mean, I'm tired after every day. But ancient Greeks and Romans believed that extensive physical activity would cleanse you of the werewolf malady. So just wear yourself out at the gym. So have somebody throw a stick around and chase that stick around <laughs> over and over and over again. You do a lot of jumping jacks and dog in place and then run around chasing your tail. <laughs> You'll be fine. The next one is actually German. So I don't know why they didn't do this one. Maybe this came after they murdered Peter Stump. I don't know. But basically just address the werewolf by their Christian name three times done cured 
And they're like, Peter. Oh, <laughs> what is your name? What Peter your name? Alexander <laughs> Heinrich Stomp. You come here right now. Peter? That's why he had so many names. So no one could cure him. He wanted to remain a werewolf. Archibald, Jeremiah, J. Brad, Sputin, C.C. Esquire the Third. You come here right now. <laughs> I'll say it two more times. I swear to God. Okay, and then the Danes are the only ones that had anything that was like safe to do, which is scold them, and that's it. They'll be cured. <laughs> Give them a lecture. <laughs> you know? are not a good boy. You are not the bestest boy. <laughs> you little son of a bitch. Cured. Okay, okay. so Archibald, do your mind. Play fetch until exhaustion. The third. I said uh -huh. it twice now. Call them get, by their don't Christian get me name. through the third time. You, you know what happened to Beetlejuice. <laughs> Scold them. Mm -hmm. And then what's next? Rub their nose in their pee? Okay, the rest of them are potentially No, you roll, roll, roll them over on their back and you spit in their mouth. Or you scratch yeah. the belly. <laughs> what? You and I went two very different directions on that one. No. I don't even. I'm telling you, that's no. so that's what they did. <laughs> If you want to break a, a, a dog of their, I highly question that. Uh, Grand's, my grandmother's neighbor, the whole premise was that if you want a dog to submit, you roll them over on their back. And I'm pretty sure that's how you get any living creature to submit or at I least guess. be stunned for a moment. And you spit in their face or mouth. I mean, I know it would stop me for a good five seconds at least. The minute you roll like, me over my back, you don't you even do? have to spit. I will be like, listen, I don't know what's going on, but whatever you want, it's yours. I don't care. I'm no dog expert, but I had... I have Lucy and Jar Jar and, you know, Lucy is always terrorizing Jar Jar. And one of the things she does is get his whole snout in her mouth. <laughs> and I wonder if it's a similar concept. <laughs> so you don't spit in the mouth. You just wrap your mouth around her snout. Yeah. I mean, if glad, that's what you, glad to clear that up. If that's what you'd rather do, go for it. I don't care. I just like put your mouth around the dog's I will No, say I'm not the, suggesting that you might get bit. Don't do it, people. I, I will say that. And yeah, because the no one in the right mind does that. <laughs> I mean, I think it would work on like literally anything with a pulse. It's like you're. It's mm, dogs. I know. I there are snippy dogs, though. Minute. Well, this is why you can't beat dogs and then expect them to not bite you. But right. it's like a similar concept. Like you can't spit in their mouth and expect a dog that wasn't behaving to suddenly behave. They probably bite your face. Well, it's not obedience <laughs> at that point. It's fear. Yeah. I mean, it's beyond me. I, I would never do that to a dog. Yeah. I mean, some dogs will like cower and you can beat them or whatever. Like I, I don't beat my dogs. I'm not saying you should beat your dogs, but you know, like abusive people will yeah. torment their dogs. And then they're surprised when their dog turns on them. It's like, well, because the alpha thing doesn't really work. You're actually engaging with a domesticated predator. And so you need to right. more have like a symbiotic relationship with them rather than trying to be like, exactly. I dominate you. And I lord over you with fear because that's not really like. Yeah. See, work. I always believed in creating a bond mm -hmm. with them, not lording over them and being like, yeah. well, I'm the leader of the pact. It, I always believed in oh, you're safe with me. I love you. You're accepted. You're safe. And I will protect you. And that's yeah, how I am with Caboose. Yeah. I think that um, we like dogs and cats and deer. In this group, yeah, <laughs> I, I like animals. I do. I like that. I like animal animals too. I like animals. Okay, like, dude. I um, really want a bunny with hats. Yes, that's what I would do. I know. Would, would your cats terrorize the bunny though? That's yes. why. I, so okay, so so the way supposedly the way you do it, if you get a kitten. And a baby bunny at the same time and grow them up to be bestest of friends it works but otherwise yeah. you are begging for trouble okay these are the unsafe methods so <laughs> don't actually do them okay so it's unsafe so obviously it came from medieval europeans um so one method 
for de-werewolfing yourself is to take some wolfsbane, which is poisonous. So again, don't do that. You, it's fatal. Zero out of 10, do not recommend. <laughs> um, they had some surgical methods, which I couldn't find any solid info on, but since it's medieval Europeans doing it, I'm sure it was fatal. Um, exorcism. And then the last one, convert to Christianity. Probably Catholicism, if I were a betting man. Um, no shade to you, Chris. I see you looking at me with those piercing blue eyes. With those piercing <laughs> Catholic werewolf eyes. Yeah, I have piercing blue Catholic eyes. Don't make him mad. He'll project onto us. The pagan is pissing him off. <laughs> okay. And then the last one is from the Sicilians. Um, so they believed you could cure someone of werewolfism by hitting the afflicted on the forehead or scalp with a knife. Or that's a very that's a very Italian solution, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna we're, we're gonna just uh, give him a little stab. <laughs> After you make him an offer, you can't refuse. <laughs> or piercing their hands with nails. So that's very Roman. <laughs> yeah, Those I'm going last... to claw you if you don't stop. <laughs> so don't. I just do like the, the last mafia couple. solution. <laughs> Just knife the guy. Yeah, like what is it like the side of the blade where it won't cut you, or is it like straight up the sharp side hit him with it? That's yeah, the mafia don't play a mess. <laughs> it's just gonna be knife to the gut. I did see shrewd. I did see something though that said like if you wanted to tell if someone were a werewolf, you would you could cut their skin and then underneath would be fur. So maybe that's where that comes from. I don't know. Like Wait, the but then how does the fur, the fur <laughs> how does the fur get to the other side when they become a werewolf? They shed their human skin and then just grow it back really quick. I don't know. Ask the magic. Or are they like a transformer and like panels of skin rotates? <laughs> uh, like a transform, transform and turn into a werewolf. Maybe it's the. It's Satan's uh, werewolf belt that does it. I don't know. Satan's werewolf belt. Plus 13 <laughs> agility. <laughs> Extra bonus during the midnight <laughs> hour of a full moon. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the story of the werewolf of Bedburg. I don't know. Where can you find us now? We're on Spotify, Amazon Music, and iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Something Apple like Podcasts. We're not Apple on iTunes. Podcasts. Whatever you dirty <laughs> Apple people use. Find <laughs> us. Um, and you can also email us at littlepodcasthorrors at gmail.com. Feel free to send your personal stories. And uh, that's it. So bye. Yeah, last And that's it.